Hello everybody and welcome to Alex's Knives and Such, where the such stands for EDC gear. Yes, I had made this like a 10 minute video not too long ago, but somehow it didn't go the correct way. So I'm trying again. Today I was supposed to get my CJRB kicker from Atlantic Knives company website. Where I bought this knife, the QSP Penguin, in D blue jean micarta in D2. So I'm doing this freehand without my tripod. And this came December 10th when it was supposed to, when it was supposed to come the 8th. And yes, I gotta clean this blade, which I could have done from the other take, but I want to make this as real and correctly as possible. So you gotta show it how it is. And my CJRB kicker was supposed to come today, which the post office said it will come either Monday or Tuesday, but don't hold them to that because they're still backed up two to three weeks, which my brother got something from US, UPS today on time. So that's that for you. But um, I just want to say that these, if I didn't make a review on this, this review will be coming by the weekend, by Sunday or Saturday. And the review for this, Camillus, sorry, Camillus Horizon in D2 will be coming tomorrow. I'm going to be available a lot and be able to make videos. I haven't watched as many videos this past month as I have in December or November alone, but... I'm getting back into it. I've watched more today than I have the whole month. But anyways, this is the it's the QSP Penguin in Blue Jean Micarta in D2. Um, and this is the Camillus Horizon in D2. I've only seen one video in 2020, which was a torture test. I don't know if this is a current new model that they made in December of 2020 or sometime in 2020. But it's really rare to find the Camillus knives in D2 at Walmart. I don't think I've ever seen in the last year or year and a half, even two years, a D2 knife at Walmart. I've seen also eight. I've heard somebody got a $7 Rat 1 at Walmart. My local Walmart don't carry money knives. They sell out a lot. My mom's Walmart carried this one. And my Walmart in my area said they never carried this. And my mom's Walmart has a better selection than mine. Stuff I can buy there, I can't buy in my Walmart. But, I also sent out to Buck Knives in Idaho, two knives for warranty, per warranty, or however you say it. Two knives per the warranty. And one of them is the Buck Bantam, which has pins instead of screws, and their not good enough because the, they might just put screws in there or they might just give me a whole new knife because I got it in August and less than a month later the um, thumb studs are loose and turnable and the blade is ha, has blade play and the other one I got in a trade and it was rusted a lot to the point where you can look inside and see some rust the blade has some rust and it's loose and it's the Buck Mini for 25 which it's pinned. I have two I have three fixed blades and I really like my buck fixed blades buck fixed blade which I'll make a video on but right now I'm gonna say a few things about it. The nylon sheath is really sturdy and super good quality and I carry it on my hip and to me it's better than my old timer um, sharp finger. I got on Black Friday with the camo handle. Better everything, I say. Even though the other knife isn't bad. And the only and my other one is a double edge cold steel hideout, which is legal here and I like it a lot. And I've carried it, wore it as a neck knife. Can't use it because the chain broke, so I have to get a new chain. And I haven't done that yet. Which means I didn't want to carry it as much until possibly February. 
But I would like to know from you guys' opinion how different steels hold up during the cold while carrying them and using them outside in the cold. Not against wet conditions like snow or rain, but how do they hold up? Or like D2, does the cold do anything to it? Which I don't think it does. I think it depends on what it cuts. But buck knives um, have great heat treat on their 420HC. If you want my opinion, I really, really like, I think it's called CPM 20 CV or 20B. I have the app that shows steals on my Android, so I can look those up and let you guys know anything you need to know or do it for my videos. But 20, 20B is what I would get if I got a forger to make me a knife. Or if, or if I had a choice to choose on a knife, it'd be 20 CV. But this buck really shines in the light. You can see. Sorry, did not like. Don't like to do it to my blades, but that happened. Not on the first take, but it happened here. You see, this is really shiny. That's really um. Shiny, but I have to. I'm on my left hand since I'm using my camera, so you guys, you see the other side of the blade instead of what the, the um, logo side. And I'm going to have to switch hands now and show you this. Um, this buck, USA Made. Um, I like bucks because they have a name for their knife and they have a number. Which you can see this one is the six seventy three. Sorry, I have my flash light turned on my camera while I'm taking the video, which I shouldn't do and I usually don't anymore. But during the view, it will be a lot more crisper and clearer. I have a spotlight that I could use as my video light since I have to be at home a lot more because of the colder weather. If there was a way to get this in purple rubber to change the color, which it probably is, and then to get this in black or stonewash, that would be awesome. But I'll keep it like this for the time being. Sorry. I'm moving my camera around to get situated, but this knife will be probably having its video on Sunday. These two will be on Saturday afternoon. And this is a really, I'm just going to say this really quickly, but this sheath, so good, so high quality. My thing is, though, I don't usually have fixed blades because when I first started out in 2014 with knives, I associated fixed blades with non-folding and because of that it would be more prone to cutting and dam and accidental injury but now that i got it i'm trying to learn this more and i've realized it goes like this up on the on the um belt loop or on the hip side it's like that up and down so it's good and i will be using this fixed blade way more and over the weekend, over my folders, I might just put it in my pocket, take it out when need be, and see how it cuts. Plastic packagings for food and such. Because, to prepare for my review, I would need to. And, I like it so much, and I carry it more than my sharp finger old timer that I got on Black Friday with the camo handle. And more than my... Cold steel double edge fixed blade, which is a neck knife because the, the thing to wear it, which is the chain, had broke. And I need a new one, which will probably be getting February to carry it a little bit more. I want to say that in my state, the laws for knife blade length is four inches. Lots of states I hear, sorry, lots of states I hear is four, three inches. So we're lucked out and we have double edged allowed and lots more along with May of 2020 they allowed fix I mean automatic knives to be carried in town not just in your house and I don't see a length limit so four inches is okay or less and I like to know if there is any um, evidence or anything that shows why um, using 420HC or D2 or even Aussie in the cold would do anything. I know certain 
um, acids or stuff you cut can affect the patina or a stain or whatever on 420HC or high carbon steels. It has like dark stain and you can oil that and get it off. I've done that. Seen it come off. D2 needs to be oiled. And I, I don't think that the cold weather has anything to do with it. Not considering the snow or rain or liquids or stuff that you cut. I'm just saying taking it out and opening it in cold then having it sit out for a little bit before you use it. Does that have anything to do with it? Probably not. Let me know if I need to clean this because over the weekend I might just end up cleaning this handle just to see what happens. Lots of people though have gotten their blue jean micarta or denim micarta in the dark color. Mine came like this. Light blue jean micarta. So, And this is just straight steel which sucks because if it gets wet it's going to slip and it could cause injury. So, but it's really, really fidgety. Not like my TS, to, I mean, Tucson TS-16, which is really drop shutty, but it's fun to fidget with. I'm going to do a showdown between the, these two knives and the TS-16 and the Cam Camillus LK-6, which three of them, except the Camillus LK-6, are in D2, so the seals will be comparable. 440 will not be comparable, so that will not really be in the factor to it. I will do handles, blade shape, how it feels ergonomically, clips, and all that. And do these two with the Tucson TS-16. And then all of those against the LK-6. It might be two, or, two to three videos for this, which will have some of it on Sunday or Saturday and some of it on Monday. Which will be a good um, thing to do because other than the regular rev reviews and first impressions, I need to do more. And I don't feel like doing torture tests because I don't have an enormous amount of money. And the knives I buy, I like to keep for as long as I can. Also, I sent the two buck knives out for the warranty, which... I don't know if I said it in the first part of the video before I ended up having to stop and make this part to include in the video. But they're supposed to get there today. I don't know if they did, but I'll check after the video on my um, my USPS tracking numbers. And see, because the buck knives, one of them I got at Dick's Sporting Goods a month or so less than uh, in August or so after my grandmother died August or September for my brother he bought it for me on sale $21 which usually I see on Dick, at least at Dick's Sporting Goods it goes for 25 and since it's pinned it can't be fixed by me and it's blade play and thumb stud it's are wobbly and turnable and in a trade I got the Buck 425 which is the Buck Mini and that has rust and blade play so either they put um in the buck bantam they put the uh, screw instead of a pin or they just give me a whole new knife because i didn't get the buck bantam long enough to use before i did that i opened it a couple times and maybe cut once or twice before the thumb set started to be loose and i sent my a couple budget knives like four budget knives out to where some most of three of them are slip joints and one of them is a folder to big red edc on youtube and then he'll send it off to another youtuber which i won't mention right now but i thought since i'm not in the past around group and haven't been asked to be in it why not send my knives out and along with sending my knives out i talk to big red edc on instagram a lot by messages get some information get some ideas and asked him if he wanted some knives one of them is a SOG that's discontinued. One of them is, and two others are slip joints, which I won't give away what model or make. And he agreed, and all I would like, and he he agreed, which will, I'll get a shout out to my channel. So anybody who watches his videos, which there is a lot, will know my channel because I really would like to grow my channel. 
I'm hoping for 100 subscribers in total or more by April or May, which, yeah, if my channel gets promoted more or at least in a big way, I can get that. So, I'm at 65 right now, and my views, like the total views, are over 1,300, so, or maybe close to 2,000, I think like 1,500, 1,600, which I find that awesome. I've never had a YouTube channel where I tried this much for and have been so into it. It's not like it's bothering me or boring me or like a chore. This is actually really fun and really interesting because I get to talk to people in the community. I get to interact with comments and Instagram. And I also get the, the opportunities that I wouldn't if I hadn't done my YouTube channel, which makes me feel like I'm fully into the community. My Instagram, I don't know how to link my Instagram to this. So if you want my Instagram, I'll put the name in in this video but I'll tell it to you it's Alex's A-L-E-X-S Knives K-N-I-V-E-S Stuff S-T-U-F-F -F, No Spaces So if you want my Instagram I post a lot of pictures and more will be coming and I seem to have more followers on Instagram than I do on subscribers on YouTube, which I don't understand, but it is what it is, I guess. And if you have any ideas of what other videos I should do other than the, like the knives that are versus each other, let me know. Because I got a lot more knives that could verse with each other. I could do the bucks if once I get them back versus each other. I could do fixed blades versus each other. I could do... D2 versus Aus A, if you really want those knives against each other. Or I could do flippers versus other flippers, thumb studs versus, versus other thumb studs. I could do slip joints versus slip joints. Let me know how it should go. Um, also... If there's anything that I missed, let me know. Or if there's anything you want to comment, you can. And to 2021, I feel that it's going to be great for my channel. At least for now, I know a little bit of what I'm doing and what's coming for this month and possibly into next month. Because every month for the whole entire year, which I've never done this before, I will get one budget knife between... 20 and $60 each month, if not priced more. If I get my part-time job, that will help me out tremendously with my channel and lots of other stuff in daily life. So, right now I got the CJRB kicker coming in the mail. So, I'm looking for at least probably the Buck 110 Slim as my next knife. I've seen on Atlantic Knife Company. They have those with thumb studs already on it, which is super cool. It's the select version with the 420HC. But if you guys have any knives, I should check out because I get between one or two knives each month. When I get my part-time job, I will let everybody know, and that will get me an extra knife or two each month or more. So right now, um, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who has followed my channel at any time of it being open in the last seven to eight months. Open, which means that I made it with videos. And I've only been getting better. I went from being in my apartment in the dark, barely seeable, and horrible quality, to where I am today with more light and occasionally using my tripod more. Which, it's not a great tripod because it doesn't do the angles correctly when I'm outside on the park table. It looks like I have to overreach, and yeah, it's not high enough, but it's better than what I've went with. A dark room in my living room, to barely seeing, to lots of movement. Now I'm doing freehand, and I say that I can actually be more a lot stable than I used to be. So, you guys can let me know what you think about my channel, and 
enjoy the content that's coming this weekend and throughout the year. Like, comment, share, subscribe, even dislike, and I'm not one that just sits there or during the video talks and flips knives, which I should do that more. But like, comment, share, subscribe, and even dislike because dislike helps my channel, even if people don't want, don't think so. Which I don't want dislikes, but if you dislike, you dislike. And have a great day. Be safe. And remember to use those sharp blades. Nice buck. Nice fixed blade.